Hi, welcome back to the shop. This episode is going to be a big one. I'm going to be focusing on the ink rollers. Typically on platen presses, ink is loaded into some sort of ink distribution mechanism, like an ink disc or an ink well. Somehow, the ink needs to be applied in a thin, precise layer on top of the type, and this is the job of the ink roller. I've already made the roller frames, which will push the rollers around. So, once I've got the rollers installed and working effectively, the inking system on the letterpress should be complete. Let me break down this roller project into some smaller pieces. First, I need a round core for the roller to roll around. At each end, there's a disc that keeps the roller an even distance away from the chase. I've got to craft an attachment mechanism so that the roller follows the path of the roller frame. And finally, there's a task of covering the rollers in a rubbery surface that will pick up ink. Let's start with the rollers themselves. The part I started with were these donut-shaped discs. I need four of them, each exactly the same diameter. These will keep the roller exactly the right distance away from the chase. These in practice were made very similarly to some of the gear blanks in the drive mechanism. I scribed a circle using a compass. I roughly cut the blank out on the bandsaw. The mill made quick work of the center hole. And finally, I could round off the outside of the lathe. In order to hold this piece onto the metal core of each roller, I'll add a hole for a set screw. Some quarter twenty threads complete this part. So, at this point, I needed a core for the rollers. I measured and cut some steel bar, and then roughly installed the steel discs onto the end. I'm not really worried about precision yet. I'll reinstall these later and shim them to be square. Next, I need to start thinking about the roller attachment mechanism. This is something I started way back in one of the first episodes, as I was working on the roller frames. I've cut slots in each roller frame, and my plan has always been to install a spring-loaded piston into each slot. Each piston will tension the discs on each side of the roller against the frame of the letter press. The parts I haven't yet thought much about are the hooks that attach the rollers to the press itself. You can see these hooks in other letter press designs, so I figured I'd try to replicate them. These hook parts start off with some half-inch thick steel plate. I'll draw out sort of the shape I had in mind. Just like the roller parts, I rough cut them on the bandsaw. and also drill the hole down the middle of each. So at this point, I just really wanted to give them a try. So I flattened off the back end and drilled a hole so I could attach them to the roller frames. But this didn't go so well. These parts were way too big. Also, cleaning these up on the rotary table would have been a ton of work. So I decided to start again. I think I might know a better way to make these parts. This time, I've decided to make these pieces much smaller, and with some material that is already round. I'll install it into the lathe, but I'll offset it slightly so that I can drill an off-center hole. Speaking of, I'll start with the center drill and slowly enlarge the hole to fit the roller core. I'll part off each piece. On the thick end, I'll drill a hole to attach these parts to the roller frames.
Here's how these parts will be used. I like the way these work a lot more than my first try. Next up, I need to finish machining the roller frames. Initially, when I made these parts, I left out a critical feature. Holes along the front face for the pistons. I'll bore these features now. Now the pistons. These will keep the rollers pressed up against the rails of the press. They were powered by three springs each, with a small nut at the end. Here's their full range of motion. Let's install the roller blank and see how well this thing works. Whoa, nice! There's still some problems to work out, but that was pretty neat. The first problem I encountered. The rollers seem to occasionally get stuck. One side would extend more than the other side, and this would result in the mechanism binding up. I thought the first, easiest solution might just be to tighten up the pistons. That seemed to help at least a little. I think in order to really make these things work well though, I'm going to need a finished roller. That brings me to the last big task, casting some rubber rollers. Since the start of the project, I've known that I was going to need some rubber rollers eventually. I've had a number of folks reach out and suggest where I could send my roller cores to be professionally cast. But I really want to give this a try on my own. I've casted a few things out of silicone in my day, so I'm not going into this completely cold. I'm going to begin by casting a small sample, basically a 2-3 inch long section of roller. If this goes well, then I'll cast both the two rollers. If it goes badly, I might have to get the professionals involved. First step, what sort of material should I use? Well, according to my research, most letter press rollers are urethane. Also, they've got a sure hardness of somewhere between 20A to 30A. So, I've purchased some material that fits that specification. Next, how am I going to cast these things? They need to be as close to perfectly round as possible, and I've got to embed the roller core as close to the center as possible. To solve the perfectly round problem, I'll use some PVC pipe. I'll cut a section to length on the table saw. To solve the core as close to the center as possible problem, I'll take advantage of the discs. They hold the core in the center, and as a plus, I can also use them as end caps on the mold. To get this small section of roller into the pipe, I'll use an arbor press. Now I need to seal up the joints to make sure the rubber doesn't leak. My weapon of choice? Hot glue. All over the place. Inside the pipe, I'll apply a layer of mold release. I want to make sure I can get the roller out when I'm done. Okay, finally, time for the rubber. It comes in two parts that need to be mixed together in a one-to-one -one ratio, either by volume or by weight. I've done the math. For this test, I'll need about 80 grams of material in total. It's really important that I mix this stuff well. I scraped the sides in the bottom of the container as I went. My biggest fear with this process is accidentally introducing large bubbles into the mold. I don't have a vacuum degasser or anything fancy like that, so I'm going to do my best to force any air out of the mixture when pouring it. Keeping the stream thin will help. Luckily, I had no leaks or other incidents. I let the material cure overnight. In the morning, I started the demolding process. This piece was pretty small, so I was able to use the arbor press. Once I finally got the mold off, I could inspect my work. And wow, it looks significantly better than I expected. 
I definitely feel like I can make some full-size rollers with this technique. So, with that success under my belt, it was time to start on the full-size rollers. But, when thinking through the process, I realized there's something I need to do first. I was in need of a small hole I could pour the urethane through, so I'll drill one in this disc. And from this point on, I followed the tried and true method from the sample. This process should look pretty familiar. Once it's time to pour each roller, I'll use that small hole I drilled. For the second roller, I ended up making myself a little funnel, which made the process a little bit easier. I let them sit overnight to cure. The next day, I couldn't wait to demold my new rollers. I couldn't use the arbor press because they were a bit too long, so I had to improvise. The only thing large enough in my shop was the mill, so I sort of used my mill like a really big arbor press. Eventually though, I ran out of clearance, so I sliced a bit off the top of the pipe to give me more room. So, here are the rollers on the press. These came out so much better than I thought they would. Unfortunately, I don't yet have any ink, so I can't try them out yet. But, some should be arriving soon, and I can't wait to see how they work. So, that's all for this one. What do you think of my rollers? Do you think casting my own was a good decision? Let me know in the comments below. And, thanks for watching! See you later!